companies naturally want to use their experts, their people that have a lot of knowledge and past experience for most aspects of new product development, new process development, that's perfectly fine. But when you're pushing the boundaries of technology and there's no past experience, what do you do? You know, you, you can't look at what you've done in the past and say, well, we made this mistake, we're not gonna make it here because there's no basis to, to judge off of. So you really need to think differently. Our focus is let's think about the finite number of things that must go right based upon what we want to have happen versus the infinite number of things that can go wrong because there's no past experience to tell us what could possibly go wrong. It's much more than just a fresh pair of eyes and ears because we're putting a systematic and structured approach in place that's going to allow you to identify the key input parameters on something that you, you haven't done before and you have no past history or knowledge to be able to rely on. We're looking at it in terms of what are the defined outputs and what do we need to do to control those. And so we're not getting into the realm of what would a, a customer be defining as their needs, uh, voice of the customer. We're, we're much more narrowly focused in on you've got this product or this process and you have these parameters that are pushing the boundaries and how do you ensure that you're going to perform over the lifetime of that product or process. The function model that we create in the function model analysis, the software that we use has algorithms that look for and identify conflicts. And also just by the very nature of walking through the process, even without the software, oftentimes the engineers that are developing the function model identify the conflicts as part of the process of creating the functional model. Resilient engineering is best applied in the early portions of new product development, where you conceptually have a design, you're starting to build your first piece of samples, prototypes, and we can really identify some efficient targeted testing to really determine what are the critical inputs and how tightly they need to be controlled. The courses are structured in terms of you participate in a class, you complete the four steps in the resilient engineering analysis, you create and execute your test plans, you gain results and new knowledge, and you've earned the right to move on and, and do it again. And as you continue to do it, we back away and, and we let the individuals inside the organization develop the skill so that you get your own self-sufficiency in doing it. In the resilient engineering path, there are three levels of certification, resilient engineering apprentice, journeyman, and master. The classes are three days in duration. Each step in the resilient engineering certification process involves classes, coaching, and certification, paralleling what we've done in, in other areas of our business.